next presenter is from Kaisei High School in Tokyo, and this is his first time to participate in the CIF project. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Taro, and I'm from Kaisei High School in Tokyo, in Japan. First, um, I decided to join the conference very recently, so I want to very appreciate the support from Ms. Toki, because if there is no help from Ms. Toki, I can do that, like this presentation. Then today, I'm very excited to do my argument to you, all the audiences, including United Nations and Russia and also Japan. Okay, so um, as you can see, my presentation slide is very simple. So before my presentation, I saw a lot of presentation by the United States students or Russian students and also Japanese students. And I think that, so this presentation feels very amazing. <laughs> And also, like, um, they inserted photos or videos into the presentation. But I can say, simplicity is the best. And maybe it's better for you to understand my presentation easily. So, it's not my excuse, but I will start off. Then, my argument is, luck in peace is people's action. First, I want to say the humanitarian approach. First, I want to emphasize on it is different from today's approach in Oslo conference or in United conference. I will tell you the difference later, but first, I want to say it's from the government and civil society and one people. I think it is very important. Governments should not limit people's or civil society's action. In other words, I think, from civil society or as one people, we can take action, and we should take action. So from now, from now on, I will tell you about what is a humanitarian approach, and why I think that this approach is important, and how this approach works now. First, what is a humanitarian approach? And maybe, out of people, can imagine easily for human. And for human, I want to say first, human life. We want to make, we should make a sustainable future. And human should be prioritized than government or nation. I think we should primarily think about human. And human rights. It is defined by the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So maybe other people know we have dignity to live, and I hope that we are equal to live. But I have the another interpretation of the humanitarian approach. Simplicity. <laughs> it is very, very important. Comparing the political approach. I will tell you about later, but I want to focus on simplicity. Humanitarian approach comes from pure reason, like we should protect ourselves. So I think that humanitarian approach is not influenced by external factors. And also before the attack, maybe you can easily imagine that once you have, we have the nuclear war. Out of people, almost people in the world die because of dropping nuclear weapons. So we should, we must prevent the nuclear war. Next, I will go on to the why this approach is important. First, radioactive inference. Why I want to say that? Because radioactive inference is very, very important for humanitarian approach. Then we can easily imagine first scientific aspect. Because, like a lot of students know, we have the two big accidents, uh, events in Nagasaki and Hiroshima. But today, I will not tell you too much because it's only two cases. So actually, to be honest, I'm living in Tokyo, so I don't know too much about the Nagasaki and Hiroshima's action. And also, like, this like this information in Nagasaki and Hiroshima, I can say 
it is very com uh, it's very completely accurate. And also like in scientific aspects, even scientists, out of scientists, have different opinions. But instead of that, I want to say about psychological inference. In order to explain that, I will share my experience in 2011, March 11th in Japan. Uh, some people said that um, nuclear reactors accident and dropping of nuclear weapons are different things. But I don't think so. Because after Mars, psychological inference and radiative inference is huge damage for human. And I think that in the radioactive inference or psychological inference, um, nuclear reactors accident and dropping of nuclear weapons have also similarities. So I will share my experience with you. So in March 11th, in 2011, in Japan, big earthquakes occurred. Then, because of big earthquakes, it made tsunami. And the tsunami devastated Fukushima's nuclear reactors. And at the time, I felt fear. So I was not able to drink. I was not able to freeze by Fukushima's prefecture or around Fukushima's prefecture. And also, furthermore, I was not able to play outside. So this is because maybe the radioactive materials is in the foods or water. And furthermore, every morning I have to see the TV shows. Because every morning TV shows said about what extent radiation meter shows. So one day the radiation meter shows high point. I cannot, I could not go outside. I should keep inside. And also, even the day radiation meter shows low point, I have to stay or I have to be careful always. So, because of these reasons, I felt very stressed. Even people in Tokyo felt very stressed, including me, all the people. So, you can imagine, of course, people in Fukushima, of course, felt more stressed than me. So, I will tell you what is psychological inference. Psychological inference is not scientific reason. So, if it is the scientific aspect, we can measure how these like nuclear materials is harmful. But it is not scientific reason. So nonetheless, I think it was very scary. And also, so I said that art of scientists have different opinions. And because of that, we had a art of we had our rumors. Because um, inaccurate information, they make the rumors. And because of rumors, rumors increase psychological inference. It is most important, I think, in that greater inference. So, for example, people in Fukushima, especially children, hard to move from Fukushima to Tokyo after the nuclear uh, nuclear reactor action because children should escape from radioactive inference. But at the time, it is said that radioactive inference will be delivered from human to human. But that is not true. But this lack of rumors, this includes psychological inference. And also, the Robert Health British said the psychological inference, the psychological impact may have a health uh, may have a consequence on health and well-being. So I think that even the World Organization noticed that like this action or uh, this action have big psychological inference. And this is not, I think, only the case of nuclear reactors action. Maybe I know the difference of the nuclear reactors action when dropping of nuclear weapons. So in terms of the thermal inference or ionizing radiation is different from nuclear reactors action. But I can say, after Mars, other people 
If in both cases, a nuclear weapon is accident and also after the nuclear war, uh, we will very, very suffer from, we will be suffer from the radioactive influence and strict psychological influence. So, I want you, I want you to notice that we have a lot of danger of psychological influence. So, next I will briefly about the status quo of the, like today's human terror approach. First on also conference in 2013. Uh, and next year, merit conference in 2014. And these conferences have the challenges and also successes. So, I will tell you about it. Challenges. Nuclear weapon states, P5, it's called P5. P5 is uh, advocate to have nuclear weapons by non proliferation authorities and did not join these conferences. Why? I think this is because they said, this is they said, this is a distraction of the NBD's action. It means that if the these conferences action will implement, this will be the obstacle of the action. And I think that it has, it lack, this conference lack of real voice. In also conferences, maybe um, Ms. Chiho said yesterday, so it has a, a it doesn't have a, almost the real voice from who actually suffer from radioactive influence. So in that conference, they invited Hibakusha or to make atomic bombs victims. So I think it, it makes, it made a big impact. But I want to say, if they can, if they, they could have invited the person who are suffering now from nuclear action like me, so even it's better to invite people in Fukushima, it makes the, these conferences action plausible. Also, I, I, I think that these conferences have successes. First, um, out of countries, out of civil societies, out of nations, out of organizations, and not is unknown, joined these conferences. And because of that, they were aware of the nuclear set on human. So, maybe you can understand what is my approach and why this approach is important and the status quo. So, I will tell you next how to use my approach to non-profession and disarmament. To explain that, I want to first defer the conventional approach, political and economical approach. For example, IAEA, International Atomic Energy Agency, or NPD, Treaty of Treaty on the Non Preparation of nuclear weapons. But I think that these actions does not work well because of complication. I want very much about these um, conferences or treaties and I noticed that Harvard Middle East they have severe Pakistan or um, severe Islam or Iraq, not Pakistan, I'm sorry. Syria, Islam, or Iraq, or Iran, then they have still the conflicts in the region. And I think that they have the possibility to have nuclear weapons again. And also, Harvard New START Treaty. Um, it is said that between Russia and United States treaties. But I don't think so. In the treaties, out of countries are related. Like the North Korea or Islam. So, this is because that I think that these treaties or these actions are very, very complicated. So, from only the political or conventional like economical approach, I don't think that it makes um, progress to non cooperation and disarmament. And back to my approach, I think only my approach has a lot of obstacles. For example, Nuclear weapon states P5. Because of that my, my action is very similar to NARIC or SCO conference. 
Then, in these conferences, these countries or these European states did not join. But I want to say now the differences. My action should be independent from government. So, from civil society, from as one people, we can take action. Also, how are terrorists or North Korea? I think this is a big obstacle to the all human terror approach. Because that, they do not think about, I think, I think they do not think about people's life seriously. But I want to say, political approach or conventional approach can control more the, the situation. I think that it is better for the political or conventional approach to deal with this problem than human terror approach. So what I want to say, I say that only human terror approach also doesn't work well. So how I would say that this is my approach to non-profession and disarmament, uh, to go to non-profession and disarmament. You can imagine that. My approach and like political approach is very different. So political approach is in depend on the government, I think. But my approach is independent from like uniform from governments. We can take action from civil society or as, or as one people. So I think that we can combine this approach. And if we can combine, we can move forward, non-profession and settlement. I think that we have to see the other pathways to nuclear non-profession and disarmament. Now, we only see that depending on the government, and we want to solve or we want to make pathways from government. But I think that we have to think about, as one people, if we, we are people, living human beings, I think that it's of course we want to live and we want to protect ourselves. Finally, I want to say that things. In 2011, I felt that fear. And after that, even Japanese government now said that to enhance their sustainable future in Japan, we should make, we should continue the nuclear problem. But I think if these adults think about seriously the people's life, especially children's life in Japan, I think we should eliminate the these problems. But the status quo, the status quo is not. I think that from youth to young years, it's a time to take action. I think that it's necessary. I think from youth or youngers, now we should take action. And I hope that this approach will be a great pathway to nuclear non-profession and disarmament. Thank you for your attention very much. Any questions? I feel free to receive the questions. Christian's comment. I have a comment. I am very glad that you brought up the human, you know, effect of uh, nuclear scare on people, and you talked about your experiences because here in California there is a pretty big group of people who now take iodine because they are scared of Fukushima radiation coming to us in the water and um, hardly anybody talks about it. So I, I really thank you, thank you for bringing this up. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question. Okay. And I'm really uh, impressed by your presentation and I'm also a strong advocate of uh, civil society and people's power. But sometimes uh, those uh, activities or actions lack some um, uh, effectiveness. So how do you, what, what's your opinion? I how see. the civil society okay. can be more effective? I see. Okay, now, it's a situation like at present, some NGOs and NPOs that can act, so take action. I think that it is a time period of making more progress in, from civil society or as one people. 
It is my suggestion, so we should not, we should, I think that it's not good to always depending on the government. So I think that to, um, my, my answer is, like, if, we want, if we want to be, if we want to make effectiveness of civil societies or as one people, so like for youth, uh, we should like make civil societies like um, it's not civil societies, it's like a campaign. I think that campaign is okay, so we can make a campaign like a signature or like that something like that, and people from Fukushima they can make action. I think that they made action now, but we have to spread all over the world, and I think that it's inevitable to ignore the civil society's action because it's a time to spread the civil society's action. Yeah.